Hello everybody, and welcome back to OMB Reviews. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope you're doing well, and today we'll be talking about the film Shadowlands from 1993, a film starring the great Anthony Hopkins and Deborah Winger, which is a film actually I'd never heard of before. So again, shout out to uh, the person that sent it to me. I can't remember if it was Rosie G12 or if, if it was Bruce or if it was Orange Chat Reviews. I, I don't quite remember, but whoever it was, thank you very much for sending this my way because it was pretty fantastic. This is a film directed by Richard Attenborough. Uh, it's a name that I recognize. I don't remember exactly what films he had done before that, that I can remember. But this is a story based off of C.S. Lewis and his relationship with Joy Davidman, who, of course, later became his wife. And so it deals with how they first meet, the relationship as it blossoms, as it grows, and then eventually, of course, into their marriage and how short-lived it was. And it was kind of one of these movies that definitely tugged at the emotional heartstrings because of just how short this this relationship really was right they had been friends for a while and then eventually you you know she gets sick in the movie obviously in real life as well she she gets cancer and this kind of causes cs lewis to go through this 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 uh this growth in character to realize that he actually really does care about her, not just as a friend, but but even emotionally and romantically as well, which eventually, of course, leads to them actually being married, even though they were only married for a short time. In fact, I want to say that according to the record, they were together for maybe about four years or so, which, again, is, is kind of sad when, when you think about it. And just, again, how, how short-lived that relationship actually was, especially after the fact of when C.S. Lewis was actually able to kind of figure that out for itself. As it says from the plot, in the 1950s, a reserved middle-aged bachelor, C.S. Lewis, is an Oxford University academic at Magdalen College and the author of the Chronicles of Narnia series of children's books. He meets the married American poet Joe David, uh, Davidman Gresham and her young son Douglas on their visit to England, not yet knowing the circumstances of Gresham's troubled marriage. And so it deals with all of the issues that are going on in her marriage, deals with all the issues going on in in her life and her son's life it gets to the perspective of both her and her son and of course it's always interesting to get the perspective of a child in this story right because children typically don't really see things as they are currently going on right they, they tend to uh, want to think of the best of their parents even if one of them is doing things that they really shouldn't be doing. So there's like a point in the movie where the kid, and again, the child actor in here, I believe it was the same actor who played one of the kids in Jurassic Park, actually. And he did a very good job of being able just to convey the, you know, oh, well, my dad, you know, he raises his voice a lot. He yells a lot. But also at the same time mentioning often, I want to call dad. I want to be with dad. And it just really that mean, meant a lot to me just to see that this was showing just the complexities of these kinds of relationships and when these things happen. So overall, I would say that the writing is pretty spot on. The writing to this is fantastic. This was apparently based off of a uh, play, so it's a variation and an adaptation of the play Shadowlands by William Nicholson, and the screenplay actually written by the same person there, and then, of course, directed and produced by Richard Attenborough. And, yeah, I think that it had all of those 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 pieces and parts there. Uh, the writing was solid. The cinematography looked fantastic. So, Roger Pratt, shout out to you. Uh, Leslie Walker did the editing. I thought the editing was very good. The pacing of the film worked in a very good way. Of course, the actors were fantastic. Again, obviously, Anthony Hopkins, Deborah Winger were the main ones there, but there was a very strong supporting character cast throughout the entire film as well, whether it's the colleagues of C.S. Lewis or whether it is uh, just any of the other side characters in there as well. I mean, there's there's uh, obviously the actor who plays C.S. Lewis's brother in the film, and I thought that that relationship was really unique and interesting, and again, very much and very well portrayed in, in that way. So you got great writing, great direction, great cinematography, of course, great acting, and I will say, though, that when it comes to the, the, just some of the subjective elements, I did find that the film at times dragged, and, and that really isn't a whole lot for me. Uh, you know, to, to be pointing at for the editing of the movie. I just think that the way that the story is portrayed, it's either one that you are going to be bought into, interested, loving every second of it, and caring about these characters and caring about where they go, or you're just going to be like, eh, yeah, you know, I'm enjoying the good acting and I'm sitting back and enjoying the story, but in the end, I wouldn't watch this film again. And that's kind of where I fell into this with this movie, right? So I was enjoying all of the different pieces and parts from that, you know, from that objective standpoint of it just being an objectively well-made movie. But then subjectively, I was like, yeah, you know, I, I don't think I would ever actually want to watch this movie again. 
It would never be considered one of my favorite films of all time, though I will say that it is still a strong movie that if you are a fan of people like C.S. Lewis or you're interested in C.S. Lewis or you're interested in any of the parts of his life, or if you are a big fan of Anthony Hopkins and you just want to see hit, see him knock this role out of the park, it's kind of interesting because this film uh, actually got a couple of Oscar uh, nominations for this year, and Anthony Hopkins was not one of them, but... Anthony Hopkins was nominated for another film he had done uh, this this year. So I just think it's interesting how Anthony Hopkins was kind of seemingly at the peak of his uh, performances here, being in two great films or two solid films enough to merit, in this case, a couple of Oscar nominations and for him to be nominated for another uh, film that he did for an acting, you know, acting in a leading role. And so it was uh, pretty well done overall. So as I said... Overall, very enjoyable movie. I would give this film a solid B. And again, as I said, the objective elements are there, but subjectively, I just, again, don't think I would ever want to watch it again. Not to say that it's bad, but it is definitely a little bit on the dry side from time to time. And sometimes I need a little bit more in order to get me to want to rewatch a movie over and over again. But if you're looking for a film well-crafted, well-put-together, and you're a fan of any of the people that I've mentioned, then this film might be for you. But anyway, what are your thoughts about this? Let me know in the comments section below. Also, of course, uh, just one last thing to mention is the fact that it does deal a little bit with C.S. Lewis's Christianity. It deals with his faith. And I thought that I did a very good job of being very balanced in that and presenting it in a very positive light. I don't think that this movie could be made nowadays with a positive spin because obviously when you look at the world around us, there's such this negative view and negative connotation towards Christianity. I just don't think they would be able to pull this off today as they were able to do back in the 1990s. But anyway, what are your thoughts about the movie? Let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you have not voted in the Wednesday Raven Awards, please consider doing so. Again, you can find a link to my website down below. If you go to Raven Awards, to Raven Awards 2020, it'll bring you to this page, and there's a link right here that will bring you to your ballot, where you'll be able to vote in the following categories. If you want to know those before going into the ballot, it is all listed here for you. There's also explanations and descriptions about what the award is really all about. So if you're looking for definitions, if you're looking for explanations as to what the point of the award actually is, then you can find those descriptions here in the nominations page. Remember that the whole point of this is indeed to boycott the Oscars. That's why the Oscar nominations come out. Rather, these nominations, the Raven Award nominations come out at the same time, and the Raven Awards are held at the same time as the Oscars, which will be at the end of April. So I'll be cutting off, uh, taking any votes that you might have uh, in the coming weeks. Um, obviously, I've given up Twitter as a part of my <laughs> as a part of my Lenten fast because Twitter was becoming very, very toxic for me, and so I will be able, able to return to that after Easter. But I definitely, at this point, feel like I'm going to be a lot more limited on that platform. But one of the things I do want to do is make sure I can get this ballot out to people because. Uh, we've had a lot more votes in previous years, and I think that we could probably get a little bit more since I know a lot of people uh, that are part of this audience follow me on Twitter uh, for some reason and not other alt tech platforms, but I do indeed engage on those alt tech platforms. So please follow me on Odyssey, follow me over at minds.com, and yeah, any way you support the channel, be fantastic. You guys are all amazing and beautiful people. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and as always, God bless. And now for a huge shout out to all of my March Patreon members. Andrew Hoyle, Animation Commentator, Brian P., Divex, Enrique Evangelista, Father Christopher Miller, Hail to you, Father, Father Damien Cook, Garrett Searles, The Honky Chonky Funky Monkey, Inflamed Wood, It's Drop Productions, Jason Clark, Jacob Juice, Jay, Jeffrey Toon, Jonathan Carney, Laura, the Modern Major General Story, Mike Jackson, Mad Mitch Dunaway, Mr. Peabody and his evil twin with the beautiful hair, On to June, Orange Hat Reviews, Out of Step with Reality, Priscilla Hall, Riff Magos, Rosetta Allen, Steve Glasker, Teresa Martin, Theodore Benden, Tina Bojan, and Biffer de Hobbit, and of course, the Empress of the Universe, Tina B. Thank you all very much for being my Patreon members. And now a shout out to all of my Subscribestar members. Stand for John B., Perpetual Punster, Mr. Roy, Glinzer, J. Alex McCarthy Jr., uh, Dean Heiss slash the new number two, J. Rod the Beer Guru, 
Nevananji, Adams, and Zikeman. And Dion, thank you all so very much for being my subscribe star members. And to everyone who has been supportive of the channel, of course, a shout out to my YouTube members. And you all know that you get your special perks every single time that we do a live stream. So thank you again for your support. If you want to have your name shouted out at the, every single, at the end of every single live stream and at the end of every single video, please check out the links in the description below to become a Patreon or subscribe star member today. You're going to also get access to things at the upper tiers like a bi-weekly podcast that I do with my friend John the Plick John the Flick Pick Flickinger. We also, of course, have a chosen of Valhalla live stream once a month where me and my chosen come together on this channel to talk about whatever it is that they want to talk about. So anyway, if all that stuff sounds interesting to you, please check out the links below. You guys are amazing, beautiful people. Hope you all have a wonderful day. And as always, God bless.